Bias policing is the inappropriate consideration of specified characteristics when making any law enforcement decision or carrying out any law enforcement function. If a police officer were to get information, for example, that a member of the Latino community wearing a certain colored shirt um, and a certain height had committed some crime, it would be okay for that officer when looking for the perpetrator of the crime to consider the fact that he is looking for someone who is a member of the Latino community. It would not, however, be okay for a police officer to go out and solely look for members of the Latino community or of any other race or gender or national origin or sexual orientation and target those people and look for them committing crimes simply because they are a member of that particular group. In that scenario, that would be biased policing and would not be acceptable. Bias-based policing is not solely uh, a law enforcement problem. In fact, it, it's a problem that can only be solved with a relationship with the citizens and the police to bring about change, and that has to be based on trust and respect. People have never had any problems with the law, and then they get stopped, and they want to know, why am I being stopped? And of course, all of the things that they've heard in the past about uh, they're stopping you because you're of a certain group and because you drive a certain car. People who have never had a run-in with the law really are upset when they're stopped and they don't know why. Some people stay angry for years if they start talking about it. They lament over what happened and it causes a lot of, of anguish and it, it, it keeps coming back up over and over again. And this could be alleviate, alleviated if they knew the reason for the stop. Vehicle stops and searches have long been a topic of discussion among the public. We here at the GPD also share those concerns. Many people are concerned by the disproportionate number of minority drivers that are stopped and sometimes searched. We partnered with academic researchers in Greensboro to help us better understand our data. And at the conclusion of their research, we found that we have no institutional or individual bias, but we didn't stop there. It was important enough for us that we've instituted multiple policies to make sure that we never have that bias. And finally, we know it all begins with leadership. Supervisors have many duties and responsibilities. And the first duty and responsibility we have is to make sure that our officers are adhering to the organizational culture and the guidelines set forth by the executive command staff. We have to lead by our word and our action and our deed. We cannot ask of our officers more than what we ask of ourselves. And therefore, we have to be the person that's acting the right way, that's expressing ourselves in the right manner, that's communicating with the community and with our officers in a positive manner. Well, leaders must lead from the front and supervisors as first line supervisors, whether it be a corporal or a sergeant, must do that. We must lead from the front. In other words, we must set the goals. We must set the, the communication structure. We must set the actions with which the officers will carry about their duties throughout the course of their, their work day or work night. We have to be out there spot checking our officers, going to calls, stopping by traffic stops, checking on their communication style checking on their use of decision making, checking on their use of discretion, and make sure that that discretion is used in a positive manner and that it's evenly enforced across the citizenry and across the subjects with which they come in contact with. Effective communication is one of the best ways to reduce the perception of bias. We've embraced this concept throughout our police department. Our recruits receive five times more training on how to connect with people than the state curriculum mandates. We have also instituted procedural justice training for every sworn and non-sworn employee in the department. Procedural justice is a simple concept that goes a long way toward building trust and understanding. It's explaining what we're doing and why we're doing it. Seems to be more a reporting from one sector, section of our community than the other, but it come, comes from all walks of life, older citizens, younger citizens, um, doctors, lawyers, even police have been stopped for no reason. They think no reason at all. 
where they've been stopped and they've been asked intrusive questions, they've been shown disrespect, and even uh, their civil rights, they think, have been violated. What Dr. Wells describes is concerning to me, and frankly it's concerning to every police officer I know. As we began to understand the data around our traffic stops and what was occurring at each individual stop, we felt it necessary to enact policies that would assure that these were done in a fair and just way. The first policy that we've enacted relates to conducting searches. Uh, every officer who conducts a search will receive a consent either on body-worn video or through a written document. And accompanying every search, we're requiring a case report so that officer will have an opportunity to articulate exactly why they did that action. I believe that adding this crucial step will add transparency to our department and make us a model agency. We all know that there are some incidents where there is not fair treatment, but I'm thinking that if we would look at it and be respectful, both citizens, police, police and citizens, things would be much better. Dr. Wells is a respected member of our community, as well as a member of our bias-based policing committee. What she's describing is unflattering police conduct. We've acknowledged that that happens from time to time. But working with other members of our community who form our bias-based policing committee, we've come together and created a civil liberties resolution. A resolution that reaffirms the police department's dedication that we will serve every member of our community with dignity and respect. We're all human and an officer is human too. He has some perceptions of certain groups. He has some labels for certain groups and we tend to do that. I mean, we, we just do it. And we have to understand that these barriers have to be broken down because we have to to understand that one side, one person has this perception, another one has another, and so we have to communicate. What Dr. Wells is describing is called intrinsic bias, and she's right. Everyone has intrinsic bias. It's part of being human. What's important to us as police officers is that we recognize our biases and take action to prevent them from influencing our interactions with members of the public. Every person in GPD, along with some community members, has received training on intrinsic bias. The training was based on scientific studies and presented by national leaders and experts in the field. I believe that this training helped each of us raise our awareness about subliminal biases so that we can better recognize how they affect our actions. I think the, the um, citizen uh, police partnership that I was talking about causes us to, to respect each other. If they respect the citizen enough to give an answer, then the citizen will respect them enough to say, thanks for letting me know and not carry hard feelings about the whole incident. I believe it's important that the community knows that our police department wants to treat everyone with dignity and respect. And we acknowledge the fact that biases exist throughout our community and throughout our department. But we're working hard to train our officers and to recognize those situations which create those biases. Moving forward, we're going to continue to work toward doing the best we can to serve our community. The more we understand each other and understand each other's job and where each other is coming from, what is expected, what, what the citizens expect, uh, it really is about communication and having a perception that we are going to work together, to, to work toward a co cooperative relationship, not the adversarial relationship, police against the citizens, citizens against the police, because they have a job to do. And we want to be protected by the police. So we have to understand that. And then when they explain it, they, they can, uh, they're not really apologizing for it. They're just doing their job, but it does help the citizen to feel better about the whole incident.